We are on a three day journey through the Bavians Kloof Mega Reserve, crossing the entire 200 kilometer 4x4 trail from west to east through some of the most remote and breathtaking scenery you'll ever see. In the previous episode, Nicole and I hopped into the Halax and made our way to the start of the trail via the Antonisberg Pass before refueling in the town of Willowmore and eventually entering the western side of the Bavians Kloof in the most spectacular way possible by descending the Nivekloof Pass and eventually arriving at our rest spot for the night, a quaint little cottage at Spearcoat. Today's drive will take us through more gorgeous scenery, up a rough 4x4 trail to a picnic spot in the mountains and into the eastern section where we'll be camping alongside a river in freezing temperatures, completely alone and surrounded by even more insane scenery. Let's get into it. Well, it's a chilly two degrees Celsius out here in the mountains. Must have dropped below zero last night because there's um, quite a bit of frost on the ground. But it should warm up today pretty quickly because there's there are no clouds today. It's a stark contrast to yesterday. Looking forward to today. I think it should be a, a very beautiful drive. We are just having some coffee from a flask up on the hill and enjoying the last uh, last few views of, of this beautiful um, location before we start packing up and getting an early start and hopefully we can show you what the uh, kind of middle section of the Bovians Cliff um, has to offer today. So let's get our coffee done, let's have a quick breakfast and let's get moving. After scraping the ice off the windscreen it was time to hit the road. With clear blue skies it was only a matter of time until it began to heat up nicely but of course being in the valley we'd have to be content with the shade for the next few hours. The road on the western side of the Bovians Kloof is in much better condition than the eastern side. When it's dry like this you could probably get away with driving a high clearance 4x2 but as you'll see later on the road gets significantly worse further east. There are a lot of corrugations on these roads but with good suspension and tyres deflated we hardly even feel them. Today's journey will take us from our overnight spot at Spearcoat along the Bovians River crossing through Sturespoort with a little adventure trail at Dorenkloof and a picnic lunch in the mountains before continuing along the Bovians River, climbing up Grassneck Pass and joining up with the Koche River where we'll be finding a camp spot. So the valley that we're in on the western side of the Bovians Cliff is the uh, Bovians Valley. So the Bovians River runs through this section. Um, where we are now, the river, you, you know, you can hardly see it, but there's all these deep canyons, or as we call them, cliffs, that run um, kind of perpendicular to this river valley. And those obviously form part of the catchment area. So the further we go down this river, the more it will start flowing. And um, it's been very dry, so I'm not sure if we'll see much flow at all, but hopefully we do, especially ahead um, when we go through Studisport, where we actually cross the Bovians River 11 times. So if it's not flowing, it'll be pretty lame, but when it comes down in flood, it uh, forms some, some uh, dodgy river crossings when you've got to cross that river 11 times. Um, and then later, and the Bovians River joins on with the Koche River, and then even after that, the Groot River, um, and they all form part of the Gamkos River. A lot of <laughs> because of the Afrikaans language, but um, in essence, this valley is a catchment area that feeds um, a lot of people and uh, a lot of farms. Further on, big citrus industry um, at the end of this valley. But down here, there's not much of a river to be found. After less than an hour on the road, we start to see the mountains on either side close in real tight and the vegetation start to get a little greener as we enter the beautiful Studisport.
So Studisport did not disappoint. It was a beautiful, beautiful drive. And we now move, we've now come out the other side and have moved into, uh, I don't know, I'd call it like the central section of the Bobby Arns Cliff. Um, behind us was the far western section. Studisport kind of acts as a natural uh, barrier between the two big valley areas. Now we're in the central section, which again has a lot of like a kind of like a big open plain at the bottom um, with a few working farms, a lot of thorn trees. We've got baboons um, up in the road ahead of us here. I'm sure we're going to see plenty more. It should be fun. Here in the central Bobby Arnskloof, you come across some unexpected things, like this little police station, which happens to have the biggest jurisdiction area in the country and also the lowest crime rate. Neither of those facts come as much of a surprise. <laughs> Not long after the police station though is the sign we've been looking for, Doerenkloof, which translates to Valley of Thorns and is home to a number of well-known 4x4 trails that wind up into the mountains. So we've just turned into Doerenkloof. Um, Doerenkloof is a, is a place I've stayed at before. This is as far as I've come up the Bobby Arns Cliff. Um, they've got an awesome bush camp. Um, and there's a lot of 4x4 trails here. So we're not going to camp here tonight. We've got a different place to camp. But we are going to uh, see if we can do one of these 4x4 trails. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. So we've got plenty of time. And don't want to rush the day. So there's there's a track here that's grade 4. I don't think we're going to we're gonna attempt that without a second spare. Or without a second vehicle. I just don't want to take that risk. But there's a few easier ones that are, I think grade 2, grade 2 or grade 3. Um, and maybe we'll choose one of those. They go up these mountains, so hopefully at the top we can pull up, we can pull over and have an awesome lunch. I think we've got some chicken wraps for lunch. Yep. So it should be fun. Oh, good. At the bush camp, we take a look at the different 4x4 trail options and decide on trail number one, the Kortgeert Trail, and pay our permit before setting off on our little lunchtime adventure. I mapped out this trail in orange here and you can see it is a relatively short trail but one that climbs up some fairly steep terrain up into the Koga mountains. All these dotted lines that you see around here are other 4x4 trails so there are many options to choose from and always a reason to come back for more. With the altitude gain on this trail and such clear weather, we are able to get a really nice elevated view of both the Bobby Janskloof Mountains to the north and the Koga Mountains to the south. You having fun? So much fun. <laughs> it's getting a little bit steeper over here, but that just makes it more enjoyable, I guess. I just wish I could see over the bonnet. One of the things I enjoyed about this trail is that you move through a series of smaller valleys and over little hills and you get to see the vegetation change as you start to gain altitude. The thorn trees turn to succulents and then the succulents eventually turn into feinbos on the hilltops. And of course a look back over your shoulder shows you the road that you took to get to where you are, which is pretty cool. Towards the top, the road did get pretty bad, and I have to say, all the upgrades I've done here really paid off. Without the more rugged tyres, the suspension lift, underbody protection and the bull bar, I would most definitely have done some damage here, but I'm able to just get away with a few minor scratches at worst, which makes this trip so worth it. My bash plate got slammed by a rock on one of these hills, and it actually dented it pretty badly. but. I guess rather the bash plate get dented than whatever's above it, right? <laughs> oh my word, these views from up here are ridiculous. I'm looking at guide GPS now, I think we're at about 950 meters altitude and down there it's like 300 meters, so it's a 
good few hundred meters drop and it's almost straight down um, and then of course up there we've got mountains that are like 1800 meters but yeah we're gonna have a, a lunch somewhere here but for now we're just admiring views and soon we'll stop and, and find a suitable picnic spot put out the awning and just relax a bit but oh my goodness this is insane um, huge canyons big mountains couldn't wish for a better day Hey, hey, so we've stopped for our, our uh, little lunch break. It's a little bit before lunch, but I'd rather get it over with early so we can, you know, just take it slow the rest of the day. But look at these views. I mean, on this side, this is the western side. We've got that beautiful valley here and some mountains. And on the eastern side, more of the same thing, just valleys and mountains. And that is the little hill we came from. So... Yeah. Beautiful scenes, but let's get the awning out, get the camp chairs out and make some lunch. What a blessing to be able to pull over in the middle of nowhere like this and eat our lunch surrounded by mountains and valleys in complete isolation. These canyons that are cut into the Koga mountains are really spectacular, particularly when seen from the air. Here is some drone footage of one of these canyons from my previous trips out here. Many of these canyons have rock art from Bushmen that lived up in caves here many thousands of years ago pretty humbling to think that people hunted in such unforgiving landscapes i mean water is not that scarce here but to chase down a kudu through these mountains must have been a challenge on a different level on the menu for lunch is chicken wraps quick and easy to cook and a definite favorite of ours the recipe for a good wrap is very simple crispy chicken cheese Generous amount of cheese. If you have gorgonzola, that's the way to do it. And some creamy mayonnaise. Oh, that's good. None of that vegetables rubbish that people do. That's just a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> With our lunch break over, it's time to hit the road again. And we have another few kilometers of rough terrain to navigate once again as we make our way back down the trail and back towards the main Bovianskloof Road. Thankfully it's all smooth sailing as Nicole and I take turns behind the wheel and about an hour later we are able to pick up speed on the main Bovianskloof Road and continue our journey eastwards. Well, we had uh, an awesome lunch break on top of the mountain. Um, it was nice to actually get off the main road and, and do a bit of uh, more technical 4 by 4 But we're back on the road now in the bumpy corrugations and we are heading east towards the, the like nature reserve part of the Bobbyans Cliff. Um, so we're going to go through an, an, uh, an access gate, the western access gate. We'll uh, uh, pay our permit and then we'll head on through to the Grassneck Pass, which is our next big pass. But before that, there's some, you know, there's a few sections here. The, the part we're passing now is called Zandflakte. And the Z in the Zandflakte, if it was modern day Afrikaans, it would be called Zandflakte, which means sand flats. Um, but Zant is obviously the old Dutch word, so a lot of this, even the word Bavian, is the Dutch, old Dutch word for baboon. Nowadays it's Bobbian in Afrikaans. So it's cool to see how these old um, names that have remained from the original Dutch, and then how the Afrikaans language has evolved over the past 200 years or so, and it's now an official language. So just a nice bit of history there. But yeah, we are just coming through Zandvlakte now. Um, and there's a couple more little spots along the way before we go through the access gate and from there it really gets wild, it gets really green 
um, the Bovians River then joins onto the Koha River and I think the Koha River will be flowing a bit which will be cool and we have a little river crossing at Smitskral and then we go Smitskral to I think there's another Broihook is the next spot and then Doetsklip is where we're camping so super excited uh, let's hit the gas and, and let's get to our next little mountain pass the eastern section of the Bovjanskloof is home to a massive nature reserve where there are buffalo, rhino, leopards and many other animals roaming free. This section is controlled with access gates where permits are required to enter. Once through the access gate, the roads suddenly get way worse, which for me is actually a good thing because it stops the trail from becoming too crowded. Thinning out the herd, so to speak. <laughs> the river also starts to flow a little bit better here and certain sections can become really green. Up ahead is the Grassneck Pass, which is our main mountain pass of the day and which sees us climb out of the Bovians River Valley, over a hill and down into the Koche River Valley where the Bovians River joins up with the Koche River at Smitskral. Another truly spectacular pass, completely different from the previous one and 100% worthy of a quick drone flight. Well, here we are at the top of Grassneck Pass. What a beautiful day, what beautiful views. Um, we've got the Bavians Mountains there. Um, Skoltsberg, I believe, is the highest mountain. I can see it over there. We've got the Bavians River curling around behind us. And we're gonna head down the other side of the pass. And at the bottom, at Smitskral, the Bavians River joins up to the Koha River. And that's where we're gonna be camping, just further up there. So, let's go do it. Um, been all fun so far, no flat tires, no incidents, I've got a few bushes stuck in my chassis from all the driving earlier, but everything's everything's all good, and with weather like this, I'm sure we're going to have an awesome evening, so let's just get on to the campsite and let's enjoy the afternoon. Between Smitskral and Doetsklip the road deteriorates pretty badly and we actually came across a whole group of uh, Volkswagen Amaroks that were contemplating whether to continue on the road or not. Of course an Amarok is more than capable of making it through these ruts but with standard tyres and suspension they didn't quite have the clearance to just plow through here like I was and they had to take their time picking the correct route. A few minutes later, after about six hours of driving, we arrive at Doetsklip, our camp spot right on the Koche River, and with a couple hours left until sunset, it's time to set up camp for our last night in the wilderness before heading home the next day.
think it's time to talk about one of my new toys. <laughs> we'll talk about it before it gets dark. Um, if you want to shower out in the bush, there aren't many options in the winter. If you want to heat water, obviously summer is easy. You can put out a solar shower. You can just hang a bucket up. You can, you know, there's a lot of options. But winter is a different story. So I decided since I'm planning to do some proper long trips um, this year, like five, six day um, trips where you definitely want to clean yourself at some point, I invested in this. This is a, a portable gas geezer. So essentially... Um, on one side it, it attaches to a three kilogram gas bottle and then you've got a 12 volt pump that can you know pump water from any source and it essentially heats up the water and distributes it to a shower head and um, this is quite a nice shower head it's got a few different a uh, few different settings and i've got a uh, a front runner shower arm on my back here ready so i can have this right next to my bucky and have the shower arm just hang off the side however out here there's no one out here so we can shower wherever wherever we want and i just thought let's get the shower away from the bucky because we don't want to have like wet sand on the side of the bucky where, where we walk regularly so rather keep the wet sand somewhere else but anyway we'll test this out later uh, i've used it at home it works really well but first time using it out on a on a trip so hopefully it performs flawlessly once again, we are completely alone. Well, sort of. <laughs> there are fresh baboon tracks all over and buffalo droppings literally a few meters from our camp. But hey, that's what we have the rooftop tent for. And I'll take this over my comfortable bedroom any day of the week. And while we're on the topic of comforts... Well, I'm really proud of myself because I had a brilliant idea. And I know you're going to tell me I'm cheating, but honestly, I don't care because it's the middle of winter. And it's probably going to drop below zero tonight. <laughs> I brought with an electric blanket. Electric blanket's gonna sit in the rooftop tent and we're gonna plug it in. We've got the cable running all the way down. We're gonna plug it into the inverter, uh, which is plugged into the auxiliary uh, lithium battery. And I've done the maths. Um, it only draws like uh, two, just over two amps, which means that we can run it for like over 50 hours before the batteries run flat. And we're only probably gonna use it for 10 hours. So it's a perfect setup. Battery's going to be still almost full tomorrow morning when we wake up. And we're going to be nice and warm tonight. So hopefully that works. But either way, it's a big improvement to not having an electric blanket because it's going to get cold tonight. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. <laughs> What's the occasion? Um, we're actually having a bit of a break after a while. Three days in the Bobbians. You can celebrate that. <laughs> I agree. Once more, our day comes to an end the best way possible. With meat on the fire, a glass, or shall I say a mug, rather, of champagne, and a sky full of stars. Thank you once again for joining us on this adventure. I hope that you enjoyed the journey, and we'll be back once again for part three we will be concluding our adventure with another day of spectacular views. See you next time.